might want to pay down your mortgage in 10 years instead of 25 by making a few small tweaks to how you pay down your mortgage. In this video, I sit down with Robinson Smith and he walks through the Smith Maneuver accelerators and how you can use them to optimize the Smith Maneuver. This is the second part of this interview. So if you missed part one, check it out right here and then come back and watch part two. Stick around until the end of the video where Robinson explains your best first steps to get started with the Smith Maneuver. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. And now enjoy part two of the interview with Robinson Smith. Yeah, so we left off in part one, we went through the just plain Jane Smith maneuver, no bells and whistles. Uh, but the results you come up with can be improved upon significantly if you have available to you some of these accelerators. So I will talk about the debt swap. Now it's not uncommon for someone to have investments, but what they can do is if they've got this readvanceable mortgage, they can redeem this $10,000 of investments for cash, but take that cash and prepay your mortgage by that $10,000. And that 400 grand goes down to 390 in one day. You reborrow that $10,000 and then purchase the exact same investments if you want, taking care about superficial loss rules, or you buy a different investment if you weren't happy with this one. And this can all be accomplished within a week or 10 days, or you can do this with cash. You've got an emergency emergency fund at 10,000 bucks, take that cash, prepay your mortgage, reborrow to invest. Now you're not going to have that emergency fund anymore, but if you're comfortable with a personal line of credit, which you promise you're not going to use unless you need to, cash flow diversion. This is very common. People get paid, income into their personal checking account, and they're doing good things. They're getting some of that invested each month, in this case, $300 directly from their personal checking account. But what they could do is first take that $300, make a prepayment against their mortgage above and beyond the regular mortgage payment, and then borrow that $300 back and then get it invested. So the th same $300 is not only getting invested, it's also reducing the amortization of your mortgage and generating additional tax deductions for you. The DRIP, this is the dividend reinvestment plan. With their investments, uh, stocks or mutual funds, whatever it is, they may earn dividends and they set it up so that these dividends automatically buy more units or shares of the investment. But again, we can say, you know what? Don't automatically reinvest them. Send them to me in cash. I'm going to use them to prepay my mortgage. I'm going to reborrow, And then I'm going to buy the exact same stock or fund that it was going to if I didn't ask for it in cash. And to be clear here, the taxation on dividends, whether you receive them in cash or whether they automatically reinvest, the taxation is the same. Prime the pump. The Smith Maneuver, we contend, is not a leverage strategy. The leveraging, the borrowing, occurred when you bought your house, before you even heard of the Smith Maneuver. That's when you borrowed. You went to the bank, got a mortgage. The Smith Maneuver, all it does is convert the existing leverage that you have from non-deductible to deductible. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about the prime the pump here, this is additional leverage. My, I want to do the Smith Maneuver. I have the wrong mortgage. I go get my house appraised. It comes in at 500000 Well, for a readvanceable mortgage, you'll need at least... 20% equity. They'll only land on a readvanceable up to 80% LTV. Mm -hmm. And if my mortgage, the one that doesn't work for the maneuver is currently at 400,000, when I get my new mortgage, every penny of that 400 I have available to me needs to go out to pay out the old mortgage lender. So I have borrowed the full amount that they will let me. I have therefore zero available on that line of credit the day I refinance. And so I continue that mortgage conversion process with the monthly mortgage payments, pay it down, borrow to invest. But if I go get my house appraised and it's at $600,000, I still only have that 400 current mortgage, then 400 of that goes to pay out my current lender, but they're willing to lend me a total of 480. So they give me immediately available credit on that, on that line of credit. And I can do whatever I want with this. What I do with this available equity is crucial to whether I'm destroying wealth, creating wealth. So if I pull this $80,000 out, I want to invest it. For the sake of this demonstration, we'll say, okay, let's, let's go get some real estate. I don't have investment real estate. I want a rental property. I got a down payment. There it is. So that's the prime, the pump. This, this 80 of borrowing, if I choose to pull it out, is new borrowing. So you want to talk to an investment advisor, you know, additional leverage, what does that do to ratios and all that sort of fun stuff. But this is very common, especially in your world, Darren, you go get refinanced or you slap a HELOC uh, in second position, you pull out the equity you can to go invest. So I've done that. Now I have my first rental property and I'm feeling pretty good about it. But I make the same mistake that many thousands of Canadians are making. It's not the most optimum way to structure your finances when you're talking about a rental. Typically what happens is people get their $2,000 and then they turn right around and they make the mortgage payment on that rental property and other expenses. And each and every month, 2,000 in, 2,000 up. But what they can do is the cash flow down. Whereas the 2,000 in rental receipts comes in, instead of going out to pay the rental expenses, I first take every penny of that 2,000 bucks and I make a prepayment against my mortgage. So that's above and beyond my regular mortgage payment. And then 
when this line of credit opens up by the same 2000 to the penny, I reborrow that $2,000 and then service the rental expenses. Now, if I'm prepaying my mortgage by 2000 bucks a month, we're seeing amortizations go from 25 years down to less than 10. And 2000 in rental receipts, probably where you live, that's, uh, that's a bit low, <laughs> I would imagine. So now maybe we're talking 3000 or 3500 in rental receipts. So yeah. this cash flow dam really speeds up the conversion process of this mortgage. Can I ask a clarifying question, uh, Robinson? Yeah. Are you talking about prepayment on the mortgage? Um, like when we get those statements from our from our financial institutions, it says you can make a one-time payment down on principal. This is not a payment down on principal. Uh, this is a prepayment of the mortgage, which is going to then re-advance the, the line of credit. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, that's why it's so important to talk to a mortgage broker who knows what they're talking about because there's an, any number of re-advanceable mortgages out there available to a Canadian homeowner, but you need the right one. Mm. And depending on who you are, the right one for you might be Manual Life One, but mm. the right one for another guy might be Scotia Step or it's the MCAP Fuse or whatever the case may be. But we're taking $2,000 and every penny of that is going against principal because as I said, that's that's above and beyond the regular mortgage payment. Remember in the other slide, we saw that principal being reduced by the regular mortgage payment. And it's so important to get the right readvanceable because if I want to prepay my mortgage by $2,000 each and every month, some lenders will say, oops, too much. You know, they only allow 10% prepayment allowance. Some will allow you to double up your payments and no more. Some will allow you to prepay by 10% only on the end. So you got to make sure you get the right one. That's why you got to talk to a mortgage broker. And even then, chances are good, especially if you're implementing the cash flow dam, that you're going to run into prepayment penalties in September or October of the year. But you do the math and the, the, the actual penalty on that is like pff, 120 bucks. I'll pay that for the month mm -hmm. in order to continue this. Yeah. So it's well worth it. So the Smith Maneuver cycle of benefits to reiterate each month, you're able to invest money that you wouldn't otherwise have available. And what we just went through there, no new cash was coming out from the homeowner. Either that, that those rental receipts, he was receiving those anyways. If he was investing 300 bucks a month anyways, he's still doing that. He's just redirecting it. So no new cash, it's all new money. And each month you're generating those tax deductions and you're getting rid of your uh, mortgage in record time due to those refunds. And again, as soon as you refinance into the appropriate mortgage, you get going on this. You start doing so and you see these benefits simultaneously, no new cash from you required. So that was a relatively quick run through. Again, a lot of information mm -hmm. uh, at a pretty good clip there. So thank you again for, for joining us today. Well, you're very welcome. Uh, it was nice to meet you, Darren. It's been a pleasure. To sum up, you know, the important thing to remember is that you may already have one bucket of investment somewhere. Maybe it's maybe it's already savings you have or it's investment real estate. This is a new bucket. This is a brand new bucket. All it takes is that restructuring so that you can start to generate wealth from this new bucket. The first time I heard about this strategy, my mind was blown and I'm sure you're feeling the same way right now. As Robinson mentioned, the best thing to do if you're interested in learning more is to get a hold of his book or alternatively get in contact with one of the licensed Smith Maneuver specialists to see if this will work for you. Just to be clear, I don't have any affiliation with Robinson and I'm not making anything from any books he sells or clients he works with. I'm simply trying to provide value for my audience and open you up to new potential ways to get to your investing goals in record time. If you do appreciate the information I share, you can do me one small favor and that's to hit that like button or share this video with anyone you know who might find this information valuable. And if you're not already a subscriber, what are you waiting for? As always, if you have any questions, you can leave those for me in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. If you haven't already checked it out, my new and improved masterclass is now available at darrenvoros.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.